Alright AMP1 students, in this video we're going to finish up talking about membrane transport. Um, so if you remember in the previous videos we focused on the passive processes. So that's whenever substances or solutes move across, or water, move across the plasma membrane. And they're always going from an area um, where they're in their high concentration, so whichever side of the plasma or cell membrane they're in the highest concentration, they're going to move from that area. Um, to the side of the plasma or cell membrane where they're in the lowest concentration. So, so that's their natural tendency, and so that doesn't require energy to do that. So, so that was um, our passive processes. Um, now, the active processes, sometimes we need substances or solutes to move across that cell or plasma membrane in the direction um, where they're moving from an area where they're in a low concentration. Um, across the plasma membrane to an area where they're in high concentration and that kind of goes against their natural tendency and so they don't want to naturally do that and so in order to get them to go from a low concentration to a high concentration um, that requires energy to push them across that plasma or cell membrane. Um, so of the active processes um, there's a few types just like there was with passive processes. And so the, they break it down into active transport as one of the types of active processes and then vesicular transport. So we're going to start talking about the active transport. All right. And the, anytime we have a ion or a small molecule, something like that, move um, from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration, um, it's being actively transported or it's undergoing active transport across that cell or plasma membrane. Um, and then remember, um, we've used this term before, if we say down their concentration gradient, like over here for the passive processes, we're saying when we when you see that down the concentration gradient, um, they're talking about a solute or substance moving from an area where it's in high concentration to an area where it's in low concentration. Then when it says against its concentration gradient, it's going in the opposite direction. The solute or substance is going to want to move from an area where it's in low concentration to an area where it's in high concentration. Okay, so that's the, I don't know if I explained those terms completely in the previous video. So that's what they're referring to when you see that, um, that uh, description of the movement of these solutes and substances. All right, so for active transport, there is two types. Um, so, and they're called primary and secondary. So what that means is um, for primary active transport, that just means that the primary energy provider for that movement of a solute against its concentration gradient or its movement from a low concentration to a high concentration is ATP. So primary energy source for primary active transport is the a energy that's in the bonds of ATP. All right, the secondary active transport it doesn't directly use ATP. So it uses energy that is generated when another solute or substance moves across the plasma membrane down its concentration gradient and so when it's moving, and I'll show you a picture of this because it's probably easier to understand with a picture. But whenever it's, whenever another substance is moving, um, it can provide the energy to move another substance um, against its concentration gradient. And so they call it secondary active transport because we're not using ATP directly. We're using energy from, a, uh, from another process, another movement of a substance. All right, so let me look at the, let's go look at the pictures of these. And they're like way down here. Oops, went a little too far. Okay, so for active um, transport, they have a couple of examples so um, of, of the primary active transport. So we'll look at those two examples. Okay, so they have a picture here of the plasma cell membrane, that biphospholipid bilayer. So hopefully everybody can see that. Um, this is inside the cell, and this is outside the cell. And this is our little um, protein. So these active processes are going to have a transport protein associated with them. So here's our little transport protein. And this is showing 
So you can see directly, so this little uh, membrane protein here, transport protein, um, it wants to move calcium um, in this direction. So out of the cell and into the um, interstitial fluid or outside the cell. And you'll notice that there's a lot less calcium inside the cell and there's a lot more outside the cell. So in order for calcium to move, it's not going to naturally want to move in this direction. It naturally wants to move from where it's in high concentration to low. But for basic processes in the body, we need calcium to be higher outside the cell. So we have this little membrane protein um, that is just the right shape for calcium to bind to it. And then we get this ATP directly from, that energy directly from the ATP um, to cause this membrane transport protein to grab hold of that calcium and then push it out um, out of the cell. So from an area where it's in low concentration to high concentration, which we also say it's going against its concentration gradient. So the gradient is just the difference in concentrations between two different areas. So if it's going down its concentration gradient, it kind of goes from high to low, but we say against the concentration gradient if it goes from where it's in low concentration to where it's in high concentration. All right, so that's one example, and this is the primary active transport because remember ATP energy from the, the chemical bonds and the ATP molecules being directly used to um, provide the energy for that membrane transport protein to push calcium across there. So it kind of has to have energy to do that because calcium doesn't want to do it that way. All right, so there's one example. The other example is the, the we have a membrane transport protein. It's called the sodium potassium pump. So a lot of times you might hear the word pump used to describe a membrane transport protein that is actively transporting substances or solutes across the plasma membrane. Um, so this one's unique, but this one is one we'll talk about, and it's like the most well-known one too. Um, we know a lot about it. So, and we, this will, this particular membrane transport protein will play a big role in a lot of the processes that we'll talk about um, this semester. So, muscle contraction and nerve impulses. So, so it's good to know about this one early on. So he, this is, so the other one up here just moved calcium against its concentration gradient using that ATP energy. So the sodium potassium pump, um, this membrane transport protein, um, it does the same thing. It gets the energy from the chemical bonds in ATP um, to change shape. Now what it's doing though is it is not only, it's called the sodium potassium pump, so it's not only moving sodium against its concentration gradient. So sodium is, uh, there's a lower concentration of an concentration of it inside the cell and a higher concentration out here. So this membrane transport protein, uh, the sodium potassium pump will move sodium out of the cell. And it always moves three at the same time. So it has like little binding sites for three of those. It's right, right shape for just sodium. And then once it pumps sodium out, so we should see it here moving out, and it used, remember, the ATP directly from, the energy directly from the ATP. Um, then what will happen is the, that will change the shape, and then now the potassium, which is, which is a lot lower inside, outside the cell than inside, um, it has a little, two, just two of them have a little area where they can bind. Um, and then when they do, then that membrane transport protein will change shape again and spit those uh, potassium into, into the cell. And then it'll just keep going and going and going. So it just kind of, that's its function all the time is to, to uh, um, pump three sodium out of the cell and then pump two potassium into the cell. And again, both of those, sodium and potassium, are going against their concentration gradients. All right, so that's our example, two examples for our primary active transport. So that was So that was the primary act of transport where ATP actually binds to the membrane transport protein and provides the energy from its chemical bonds for that movement of a solute or substance against its concentration gradient. The secondary act of transport, remember this is the one that doesn't use ATP directly. It use the, uses the energy from another molecule. So they gave you two examples here. 
I'm going to start with this one. Um, so in this case, phospholipid bilayer, this is our plasma membrane outside the cell, inside the cell. We have two membrane proteins. We're going to focus on this one. Um, so again, if you'll notice, the glucose is what they're using. Um, glucose, it's higher inside the cell. So there's like, I've got this picture, three of them in here and only one out here. So the tendency of glucose is to want to like go down its concentration gradient from an area where it's in high concentration to low. But the cell wants that glucose in so we can break it down for energy. So, so in order to get glucose um, to move from an area of low concentration to high concentration, it's going to require energy to get it across there. So where the energy comes from is the other is the movement of another molecule across the plasma or cell membrane. And in this case, it's sodium. And sodium is a pretty common one to do this for. So sodium, remember, um, it's always higher outside the cell than inside the cell. So its tendency, if it, if it has a membrane protein to pass through, which it does, this, this um, particular membrane transport protein allows sodium to pass um, along or with its concentration gradient. And it allows glucose, using the energy from sodium, moving from an area of high to low concentration, um, to make its way into the cell too and go from a low concentration to a high concentration. So, so this, this um, energy of the sodium moving into the cell down its concentration gradient, that energy is used to, um, to take glucose into the cell and move it from an area where it's in low concentration to high concentration. So they call that secondary active transport. So glucose is kind of like, you know, taking a little, uh, a little piggyback ride to get into the cell. Um, and it's taking the piggyback ride on the sodium that's coming in. Um, and then you can, this one's just showing where you can have sodium still the one that's providing that energy because it's, it, whenever um, a sodium moves across the plasma membrane down its concentration gradient, that creates energy. It was potential energy. And then once this is open, then it becomes kinetic energy. So that energy can also move a substance in the opposite direction of the sodium. So, so you can have some that move with sodium in the same direction, and then you can have some membrane transport proteins that will move the sodium in one direction and then the other particular solute in the opposite direction, so depending on its, depending on its concentration. So I don't think, oh, they used the hydrogen as an example for this one. So that's secondary active transport. So we have another molecule moving down its concentration gradient that provides the energy to get this, this other substance to move against its concentration gradient. And we do have like different um, types. This just means the two molecules move in the same direction. This means they move in opposite directions. I usually, I don't ask questions about these. You might see them on the assignment because it's hard for me not to have those, exclude those questions. But, um, but I usually don't ask those on the test. So as long as you know the difference between those two, you're good to go. All right. And then the other type of active transport is called vesicular transport. And, and there is two types of these, which you should be familiar with. So the first one is called exocytosis, and the second one is endocytosis. So um, over here, remember we had ion or small molecule moving against its concentration gradient, so that's what can move with active transport. You may do it with primary or secondary. With vesicular transport, these are usually like really large molecules or substances, so it's really hard to for them to pass through a membrane transport protein to get across. So what they use to get across the plasma or cell membrane is a vesicle. So a little, uh, and it kind of resembles like the, the makeup or structure of the plasma membrane, um, but you will have a um, vesicle form around this large molecule. And then that vesicle will move across um, the plasma membrane. And it'll either move out of the cell. So I always think exo means exit. So so the vesicle um, is formed, and it, when it moves out of the cell, we call it exocytosis. Um, but then sometimes the cell wants to take a large molecule in. So if that happens, we call it endocytosis. So think endos inside, so it brings it into the cell. So so those are our and so and they have some other types of endocytosis, but these things will we I won't ask you questions about either. Those will be for um, AMP2. I usually have you go over the definitions of those when we do the um, immune system. So 
All right, that's all for this.